Along with me, Dr. Wei Datong is uh, our division director, is also on the line. So it's my great pleasure to, on behalf of Air Force, to give this presentation. The title is Prediction of Drug-Drug Interactions with Artificial Intelligence. Here's the deliver disclaimer. So first, we give you the highlights of our study, which provide you a glance of what we are thinking and what we have done. The problem, as Barry introduced, is very clear. The performance of current drug-drug interaction prediction approach is still suboptimal. There's a lot of the place, space, and for improvement. So we ask uh, particular questions, can deep learning improve the prediction performance of the drug-drug interactions? Consequently, and we develop an AI-powered model titled Deep Prescribing, which yield an average more than 90% of the accuracy for the drug-drug interaction prediction with different clinical outcomes by integration of diverse of the biological knowledge. So the meaning of these models, we try to position these models in the preclinical setting for early detection of drug-drug interactions. Meanwhile, this model could also serve as a system tools for the physicians in the real-world application. So first, a simple introduction of the drug-drug interactions. Drug-drug interactions are unexpected side effects resulting from the concurrent consumption of the two or more drugs. It's a leading cause of the mobility and mortality. A lot of the statistic numbers show the surveillance of the severity of the drug-drug interaction. For example, around 30% of all the adverse drug reactions caused by the drug-drug interaction and also a lot of the economic burdens and for the society, around 30 billion to 180 billion in health expenditures. More importantly, it's very difficult and challenge to identify and provide the drug-drug interaction. It is multifactorial that the major contributors are the aging population, growth in polypharmacology, widespread the use of the dietary supplements, raising opioid abuse of the epidemic. I just give you a quick example. Around 42% of the patients over 65 with taking more than four medications, which increase a lot of the risk to experiencing a drug-drug interaction. Consequently, tremendous efforts have been made and to detect the drug-drug interactions. In the experiment side, a lot of the in vitro and in vivo approach has been developed based on the pharmacokinetics parameters or based on the metabolism information, such different kinds of the statements. I see also promote interactions uh, which released several documents, guidance, and to guide the industries conduct the preclinical and the clinical for the drug drug interaction detection. However, uh, this wet lab based approach is very labor intensive, time consuming, and it is also not scalable out and open, low throughput. So, with this in mind, a lot of the in silico models also developed for the drug drug interaction predictions. We actually list uh, representative studies in these tables. You can see there's uh, different endpoints. Some people use the binary, other people use multi labels from the different data resources, data type, sample size, different algorithm, different performance metrics. In summary, there are some difficulties in accessing the in silico models reported in the literature for the drug-drug interaction prediction. I highlight three aspects. First one, sample size differ from one model to another. Some people use the conventional machine learning, other people may catch the deep learning, uh, and the performance matrix differ among the models. People use diverse like the accuracy, F-score, all kinds of the statistical measures to assess their models. More importantly, no standardized label data with clinical outcome to describe the drug-drug interaction. To overcome these difficulties, we propose our approach. If you see this illustration, our approach consists of three steps. First step is determine the clinical outcome of individual drug-drug interaction through a proposed ontology-based strategy. The second one 
we generate the descriptors by integrating diverse of the biological knowledge to describe the drug-drug interaction. So with the clinical outcome and descriptors for the individual drug-drug interactions, which allowed us to build the models and to AI-powered models to predict the clinical outcome for any drug-drug interaction. So let's work through this uh, flow. So first, how to determine a clinical outcome for the individual drug-drug interaction. So uh, to do this, we develop a drug-drug interaction, uh, interaction ontology, we call it DDIO. So here is the workflow to generate the DDIO. I'll give you a very quick introduction. First, we extract the drug-drug interaction description from the drug bank. There's a, around like 0 0.6 million of them. Then the second step, we use the AI-based language models. Specifically, we use the Google Universal Sentence Encoder to analyze these descriptions and summarize the drug-drug interaction type. Then for each of the drug-drug interaction type, we use the match recording to record their clinical outcome. And then in the last step, we fully take advantage of the match recording hierarchical structures to get their low-level term, PT term, and the Society of Organ term to organize the DDI ontology. Consequently, we get the DDIO consists of 237 clinical outcomes for around their 6 million drug-drug interaction pairs. For our best knowledge, which is the most comprehensive one in the public. So here, I give you a quick example with the DDIO. You can see this is a one DDIO type. It's a risk of severity of the hypertension can be increased when the drug A is combined with drug B. So we get to the metro coding for the low level terms hypertension and then map to the PT levels. The rationale behind the PT levels, a lot of the pharmacovigilance, especially in the FDA, use the major PT coding such as the FAIRS database and the FDA labels, which allowed you to link to the other resources. The last step we mapped to the SOC levels is mainly describe the organ toxicity. So uh, here's give you an overview of DDIO, some statistic number. In the left figure, you will see the distribution of the terms in major ontologies in the DDIO. The right figures is the distribution of the DDI type across the organ toxicity. You can see such as the uh, neural system, vascular cardio, and metabolism, gastric technologies pop out for the drug-drug interactions. So once we have the clinical outcome for the individual drug-drug interactions, we think about how we can generate the descriptors by integrating the diverse biological knowledge to describe the DDI. So first, the question we think a way to describe a chemical. So uh, take one step back, we think about how to describe a person. Basically, we have two strategies. One is a characteristic-based description. Another one is similarity-based description. So if you look at these figures, this is a famous singer, Sakira. She just did a wonderful show in the Super Bowl 2020. We can use some of the characteristic words like long hair, amazing eyes, lean to describe her. And meanwhile, the, these two pictures is very interesting. Left one is a soldier from World War II. The right one is famous soccer star is in the Premier League and for Asana. And you will see these two persons, one is very like to another. This is actually not new in the chemical space. We use a lot of the things to simulate this progress. So you can see in the chemical structure uh, descriptors, just like the characteristic based description, we use the chemical physical properties, we use graph based fingerprints. Meanwhile, else, we also apply the similarity approach. In our field, we call it read across. The rationale behind it is the similar compounds shared similar biological profiles. Inspired by the similarity-based approach, and we propose our approach, so-called composite similarity matrix, for describe the drug-drug interaction by acquiring archive biological knowledge. If you see this cartoon, millions of the compounds have been tested with various of the biological assays. 
However, we can find some of the assays test in the omics data, but this data not available for the phenotypic type. But uh, all the compounds, we have the chemical structure. So with that said, we actually hypothesis the similar chemical structure share the similar toxicity. With this hypothesis, we developed a composite similarity matrix, which is a novel descriptor to describe each of the drug-drug interaction based on the chemical similarity between the target compounds and the positive compounds test in the different biological experiments. If you go to the next slide, this is rooming a little bit the details of our approach. I just give you a quick example. For this project, we collect variables of the biological profiles, such as phenotypic data, this is a positive compound, and the bioassays from the ToxCast database, and the CP enzymes, this is very relevant to the drug DDI. And uh, once we get these positive compounds for each of the drug-drug interaction pairs, we can compare the chemical similarity with them to generate the fingerprints. Then we merge the fingerprints and as an input for the sophisticated artificial intelligence uh, uh, models, autoencoder, <coughs> excuse me, for these studies, and we actually use their high representation to describe their information, so-called composite similarity matrix. Here is uh, uh, the CSM model performance. You can see we try the different parameters in the deep learning models. Eventually, we found this activation, RULU, and the optimization atom as the best combination for do this model. So once we have the clinical outcome and descriptors for the DDIs, now it's ready for us to develop AI-based models to predict the clinical outcome of any drug-drug interaction. So here we propose the deep prescribing, which is adaptive multi-label deep learning models for the DDI predictions. You remember we have the CSM models encoder side. We along with merge to another multi-label deep neural network. Eventually, this model is uh, 12 layers and the structure of the deep neural network, which actually allowed you to freeze and trainable any uh, layers, provide you a lot of the possibilities and to predict the different kind of the endpoints. So in order to evaluate our model performance, we actually use the 0.6 million data divided into the training and validation we do the comprehensive model optimization, eventually use the optimal models and to predict the test set with the sophisticated model performance matrix. So let's see the model results. Here's the model results. You can see we get pretty good accuracy rate and fair, really fair F score. But we also have a lot of the moving space and for the precision. But how to see this model is good or bad, we need to compare with some of the state-of-art methodologies. So this paper actually just recently published and also invited to present in the annual artificial intelligence meetings and for the drug-drug interaction predictions. We actually get the better results than them. And also more importantly, they just do the binary predictions. We actually zoom into the individual clinical outcome. And then I give you two examples of the real world applications of our models. First one is drug-drug interaction for the standing drugs. Standing drugs is class of the lipid lower medications. I think it's popular. Many Americans take the standing drugs, especially about the half of the men at the age to the 65 to 74, 39% of the women at the age of 75, in summary, actually one in four Americans has a chance to take the standing drugs. It is report some of the drugs contaminated used with the standing drugs tend to hide a high probability to cause the renal myelosis, which is a severe muscle toxicity. We can comprehensively assess the drug-drug interaction related to standing drugs to get a pretty interesting result. Here you can see some examples. The Standing drug with antiviral drugs have the high probabilities to cause renal myelosis. 
Now everybody knows we are in a pandemic of the uh, treat the coronavirus. And uh, a lot of the drug repositioning approach use that. One of the directions use the antiviral drugs to treat the coronavirus-19. You can see if the patients have the prediction like the high curse natural, and you really need to pay attention to use the antiviral drug with that because they take the standing drug most of the time. The second case is, is QT prolongation caused by the drug-drug interactions. Cardiovascular toxicity is still the leading cause for the early and later attrition and drug withdrawal from the market. Drug-drug interactions contribute substantially for the QT prolongations. Here we give a very quick examples, and these two drugs, one is a tapenating, is a classical antihistamine drug, and the catocosterol is an antifungal drug. This drug is typically used together to treat the disease and also cause the QT prolongations. Use our models and to assess this drug related to the drug-drug interaction cl clinical outcome, we successfully fish the QT prolongation from it. So towards the real world applications, we put a lot of thoughts. Here, I just give you two examples. And first, from the prescribing to the deep prescribing. Actually, when we take the multiple drugs, these uh, models allow you to identify a safer alternative drug to replace the ones that may cause the unexpected DDI. And also in the real world applications, most of the time we take multiple drugs, more than two drugs. And our model allowed you to easily use our proposal the CSM to adjust the uh, descriptors, which allowed you to detect the unwanted and harmful drug-drug interaction from the multiple drug regimen. So in summary, our approach provides you three types of information. First one, drug-drug interaction ontology, which could serve as a standard ontology for drug-drug interaction data curation and the data annotation. The second one, we provide you a composite similarity matrix. This kind of the novel descriptor, which not only can use for the drug-drug interaction prediction, we can use to the others, such as the drug combination, drug repositioning application. Finally, we propose a deep prescribing models is AI-powered models is a premising approach and a fully for early detection of the drug-drug interaction and also has a great potential for adopted in the clinical setting. This is not a single person word, work. We have a beautiful team, we call it Air Force. Here's our division director, also leader of the Air Force, along with some of the members, give you a lot of the valuable suggestions and comments. 